Colossians 2, 10 through 16. The cutting off of your religious strength in the circumcision of Christ. New Testament ministry presents you as complete in Christ. In the last message, I must have said Christ a thousand times. I may be exaggerating, but I said it a lot. The point is, Christ is becoming everything to us. Amen. Everything is in Christ and Christ is everything. We are being warned not to be spoiled, taken off as spoil by something other than Christ. That's what it really gets to. Amen. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. This puts us in the heavens. When I think of all principality and power, I realize I am in him and I'm as high up as you can go. If you remember in Ephesians 1, 21 through 23, it talks about how God works, excuse me, it talks about how God worked in Christ in the power of resurrection, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father in the heavens, far above all principality and power and every name that is named. Amen. Then in Ephesians 2, it says that we've been made alive together with him and raised up and seated with him in the heavens. Ephesians 2, 6. Where are we? We are in Christ who is above. Not only is he above all principality and power, but he is the head of all principality and power now. Amen. He is heading it all up. Every region, every, yeah, every region and sphere of authority that is imaginable, he is heading it up. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We are in him. We are above every element. This is in contrast to the rudiments of the world. Amen. Colossians 2 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Amen. Really, the philosophy, the deceit, the traditions are all according to the rudiments of the world. Those dealing in these things are earthly-minded, setting their minds on earthly things, and generating a teaching that really comes from the wisdom, which is from below. James says it's earthly, sensual, and demonic, James 3.15. It is based on knowledge that can be derived from the senses and the whole sphere is influenced by the prince of the power of the air. Our information, the body of truth that, com that compromises the mystery of Christ, comes from the ascended Christ in heaven and is a matter of revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed it to us, but our Father, which is in heaven. I'm not talking about Gnosticism, saying everything in the flesh is evil, or everything in the world is evil. I am saying is that the information, is that, I am saying is, what I'm saying is that the information concerning Christ and what is true in him is not arrived at through human reasoning and philosophy or tradition. It comes from heaven. It comes from Christ. We have to see that we are in him and that we are complete in him. Amen. If you see yourself as complete, then no one has anything to add to you. Amen. We tend to think when we start out that we need something. We think, I'm a new Christian, therefore I must have a lot to learn and I need to become an expert at this thing. Then, when you are in that mode, you are highly receptive to teachers who come along and tell you, you need this, and this, and this. Everything that they tell you that you can add to Christ, something other than Christ, is going to be of this world. Yet, we are far above it. We are complete in Him. These things... They try to add to you according to their wisdom are demonically inspired to take you away from Christ. Amen. You get spoiled, taken away as spoil through these things. You must, we must see that we start out 
complete. Amen. We just need the vision. The difference between the kind of ministry you see today versus the New Testament ministry, the New Testament ministry establishes you in the, rela- in the realization that you have everything you need in Christ. It betrothes you to Christ, 2 Corinthians eleven two. It makes you want only him. And in that sense, makes you only, excuse me, in that sense, makes your, makes your eyes single so that your whole body in full of light is full of light. I'll get it out. So that your whole body is full of light and you are pure of heart versus the spoiling of the worldly philosophy kind of teaching that says you need to do this and you need to do that. Let's do a marriage seminar. And here are 21 books about marriage. Then we are going to talk about tithing and how to be blessed. Through all these different things, they are spoiling people and making them worldly. They are making them focus too much on this life that they become divided in their interest. They don't have a single heart. Christ is over here on the right and there interest that they are trying to maintain for the Lord supposedly is on the left. You can't love mammon and God, so you get a divided heart. You start getting angry at God and you don't know why. It's because you think he is placing all these burdens on you to maintain all this junk you don't even want. (laughs) We are complete in Christ and we are seated with him in the heavenlies above it all. Amen.